Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to build cascading combo box experiences in Power Apps. We will explore various scenarios with different data sources and also create multi select cascading combo boxes. So let's check this video out in action. We will explore four different scenarios for cascading combo boxes. Scenario number one, single select option, data source SharePoint. User can pick a category. The relevant subcategories will load. Based on the subcategory selection, the products will load. If I change the subcategory, the products will be reset. And if I change the category, it will reset the subcategory and product. Let's understand the schema of the data source first. I have a SharePoint list called category list. Here, I have a choice column called category, which has the choices defined for my categories. The title column is where I am defining what the subcategory is. So mobile phones is the subcategory, electronics is the category, laptops is the subcategory, electronics is the category, and so and so forth. Now to define the products for these subcategories, I have a separate list called the products list the title column is where I'm storing the product information. The subcategory column is a column of type lookup that is looking up to the category list column title. This is where my subcategories are defined in the category list. So iPhone 13 product connected with subcategory mobile phones. The product MacBook Air is linked to the subcategory laptops. Let's add a new product. That's the name of my product. Subcategory is mobile phones. Save. So based on this setup in my SharePoint list, let's try and create single select cascading combo boxes. In the data source in my Power App, I have already connected both my lists, the category list and the products list. I am leveraging modern controls. And for that, under updates, I have modern controls and themes turned on. The same technique will also work with classic controls. I'll create my category combo box. I'll insert the modern combo box control. Items property for this combo box control. I need to list the categories. The categories are listed in column of type choice. To get those values, I'll use the function choices of my data source, which is category list dot the name of my column, which is called category. This will list all my categories. I'll rename this combo box. Next, I need to add my subcategory combo box. So I'll insert another combo box control. The items property for this combo box is where I need to list out all the subcategories based upon the category value that is selected in the category combo box. And for that, I will use the formula filter. Filter my list of categories where category, which is my choice column, so category dot value is equal to my combo box control that's listing out the categories dot selected dot value. 
So if I pick a category, let's say electronics, this will list out the relevant subcategories. Note, in the modern combo box, if you head over to fields and edit, you can decide which field from that connected data source that I've linked to the items property, I would like to show product. I've inserted the combo box, the products list. I need to show the title values of the products depending upon the subcategory that the user selects in that combo box. Subcategory is the lookup column. Items will be filter my products list where subcategory, which is a lookup column, dot value is equal to my subcategory combo box dot selected dot title. So you can see how based on the subcategory selection, the products are loading. Scenario number two, my category list, for the category, I have a text column. The remaining setup is the same. I have my products list. Now for this scenario, let's build the category. So I'll add a combo box, items property. With the choice column, it was easy. I could use the choices function, but how do I get the unique category values from this text column called category text? And for that, I would have to use the formula distinct. Distinct of my data source, which is category list, and the column is category text. So now you can see how it's listing out the distinct categories. Next step, I need the subcategory. The items formula for this will be filter my category list where the category text column is equal to this combo box dot selected dot value. So you can see based upon the category selection, the subcategories are loading. And then for product, the formula will be exactly the same as before. Filter my products list on the lookup column based upon the value that's selected in the subcategory combo box. So I was able to build cascading combo boxes, even in this scenario. However, there is a catch. This formula that I have added here called distinct actually results in a delegation warning. Meaning, if my category list had a large number of items, then this distinct function will not return accurate results that limit of how many items can be in this category list is the delegation limit. And that limit right now is set to 500 for my power app. You can increase this to a max of 2000. So this technique of using distinct will work as long as the number of list items in my category list is 500. And let me prove that there is a delegation warning here. I'll change the data row limit to one. Now, if I look at my category combo box, it only lists one item. Whereas if you look at the other pattern that I used, which was use the choices function, that will load all the choices. So it's important to be aware of the delegation limit when working with the distinct function.
Another aspect is category set to blank, but subcategory and product are still loaded. So what we need to do is whenever category changes, I want to reset subcategory. So category combo box on change, I will reset subcategory and I would also want to reset product. So you will notice now I changed it, reset subcategory. Now let's say I make this empty, both subcategory and product reset. The next scenario is to create multi select combo boxes with SharePoint as a data source. My list setup is same as scenario number one. Category is a choice column. Title is defining the subcategories and I have my products list where I have done the mapping with the subcategory via lookup column. Let's first create the categories combo box. This will be multi select. Allow multiple selection on. Items property. Choices of my category list. The name of my choice column category. I have the option to multi select. Subcategories. Once again, a combo box. Multi select. Items. Filter my category list. Condition. Category which is a choice column category dot value is in my categories combo box, which is multi select dot selected items dot value. Notice it's not loading the data. It does load one option. Well, that's because in is not a delegable query with SharePoint and my delegation limit was set to one. I'll change this back to 500. This time, if you notice, it loads all the subcategory values based upon the category options selected in the first combo box. So once again, there is a delegation warning, meaning I have to respect the fact that with SharePoint as a data source, in is not a delegable query. So I am limited to the data row limit, which can be a maximum of 2000, meaning I am good as long as my category list is around 2000 rows. Products, combo box, formula, filter my products list where my lookup column which is called subcategory so subcategory dot value is in my subcategory combo box which is multi select dot selected items dot title title has that subcategory information now, notice based upon the selection I made there, the combo box loads the values. And this combo box as well, I'll make it multi select so I can pick multiple products. Once again, there is a delegation warning, meaning my products list as well can be a maximum of 2000. All of this because in or search, these functions are not delegable with SharePoint. And the final scenario is multi select combo boxes with Dataverse as a data source. Dataverse offers a lot more flexibility purely because in is a delegable function. Let's look at the setup of my tables and dataverse. I have a table called category in which 
there is a choice column called category that has the following choice options. Title column is where I'm defining my subcategories. And then I have a second table called product in which title lists out all the products. And I have a lookup column which creates a relationship between two tables. This lookup column looks up to my category table. If I want to add a new product, I'll add the product name and then the lookup will list out all the subcategories from my related table. Done. Back to my Power App. I have both my categories and my products tables connected in my app. I'll add three combo boxes. Make them all multi-select. This is for categories. This is for subcategories and this will be for products. Let's start with categories. Category information is coming from my Dataverse choice column. Very similar to SharePoint. I'll use the choices function on my categories table. My column is called cat. Multi-select combo box. Subcategories. Filter my categories table where category, which is the choice column, is in my multi-select combo box for categories dot selected items. So we can see how the subcategories are loading based upon the categories selected. No delegation warning. And finally, for products, I'll use filter my products table where the lookup column, which is called subcategory dot dot title, which holds the actual subcategory values is in my combo box for subcategories dot selected items dot title. The products now are loading based upon the subcategory selection. Multi-select cascading combo boxes in action. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.